How did the collaboration between Risk and Monster Energy exactly happen? You know, I don't know how it happened. I think I got a phone call from Kether, and he said that they're thinking about doing this new can, and, and he wanted to, you know, that's how it happened. It just kind of snowballed. A good snowballing, I would say. If you ask me about musicians, I know how long things take. When it comes to fine art, which I call what you do fine art, I have no idea of the creative process. Can you walk me through like how long it takes from getting a, an opportunity like this to actually having a can that, that's in my hand? Well, that took about, I think, six months. And what happened was we just kind of, um, we did this can. It was like pretty cool. And it just kind of, after I tasted the flavor, it just didn't really make sense to me. So we started over and we redid the can again. Mm. And that can was like really quick. That took like a month because I just had, you know, after I tasted it, it was just way easier to do, you know? Hmm. Is this the first time you'd ever uh, designed a can before or a food product kind of package? Uh, I did a, a beer before, you know, with the Trenchville Brewery, but yeah, otherwise. Wow. So the initial, if I heard you correctly, the initial thing that you put together was before you tasted the beverage and then you tasted the beverage and went, no, it's got to be something else. Correct. hundred percent. Wow. So all the art that you do that's collaborative, do you really need to experience the thing to know? In other words, there's not like a, a thousand risk designs in a warehouse and you go match right. on May with one. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, you have to kind of feel the product and, Get a, you know, get a feel for it or a taste for it in this case. Right. And you've found success in many different forms of fine art, many different collaborations and all that. When did you know this was a career and not just, you know, sketching on a high school binder? <laughs> you know, I think it was like, you know, back when I did the Michael Jackson video, um, I just kind of, it just hit me like all at once. I was like, wow, this is really something, you know? And I just did the MTV Music Awards after that and, bunch of stuff yeah and that music video changed the world not just music <laughs> not just pop music the world did you have any inkling when you were going to work on it that it was anything special more than just like a third single not at all man like i yeah they they hired me to design three sets and one was like a new york graffiti one was gang graffiti and one was a mixture of both and he got there and he loved him and he used all three sets. And he, you know, he was so spontaneous and he just choreographed it right on the spot and just did it. Did that almost lead you down the direction of only working with musicians? I know Aerosmith has sung your praises and there's a great photo of you and Travis Barker on the website and all that, but it almost lead you to only doing music? No, I just think that um, because of LA, you know, growing up in LA and on Sunset Strip and stuff like that, I was mm -hmm. just around a lot of musicians. Hmm. And did you have the nickname Risk before you started doing the art? My first nickname was Surf. I used to write Surf, and I got caught in my high school. I got busted, and I had to change it to Risk. <laughs> wow, so nothing to do with the board game. Yeah, well, I saw the board game up in a closet, and I picked it because of that, you know? Oh, really? Yeah, my friend used to write Chance, and I thought that was, like, the best name ever, and now I think that name's kind of terrible. But I was so bummed that he had that name and I saw Risk. I was like, ah, it's kind of like that. And I, just, I guess I'll take that. Wow. Okay. I, my mind is blown with all that. So when I say that I know absolutely nothing about the crafting of fine art, when you do street art, how the hell do you practice when you have something that's really a fine kind of project like this? Well, you know, it's all just different kind of art forms. You know, my, my gallery work to my public work to my street stuff is all just different um and as far as practicing it's just painting every day you know so when you were doing the street art originally were you just learning by you tag something and you go that's good run <laughs> yeah 100 percent. like i remember my first piece at you know uh, uni high school and it was just terrible and it, like what i envisioned in my mind was not it at all but there's so many people that thought it was cool because it was so different that it got me pumped up and I just kept going back and doing it. So it looked kind of decent. And around what age was it that original, like you officially no longer had to run after doing your art that you were in business. Was it simply the Michael Jackson gig? Uh, I don't know, man. I did so many things. I mean, we, I did a bunch of movies too, a ton of movies like, uh, man, Bill and Ted's. I mean, there's so many movies and stuff like that. I don't really remember. It was just, but at the same time I was doing illegal graffiti at night. So during the day it was different than what I did at night. So, well, statute of limitations passed, am I right? So, yes. 
<laughs> exactly. Well, I really appreciate all this honesty because I think the kind of art that you do is best served when there's mystique behind the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And clearly you have a business mind to be able to be doing this long term. Any of the people you started with, are they still making art? Yeah, man. I, you know, Cartoon is a good friend of mine. We were roommates and he's, he's killing it right now. And um, Slick is another one that was a partner of mine and he's killing it. And Nathan Oda is a professor now at, at um, Otis. And, you know, yeah, all of us are still doing it. Wow. So everyone became legit. Everyone went from tagging to doing official fine art, which is really unbelievable. Like, just think about it this way. If you play in a garage band in high school, maybe one person does music part-time when they're an adult. Yeah, <laughs> not, yeah. not the whole band very often. Right. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. So besides this Monster Energy project, are you allowed to tell me what you've got in the works or what is coming out? Well, we have a toy coming out with Sideshow. Uh, that's pretty cool. They do all the Star Wars and Marvel stuff. And I think I'm the first artist that they're doing an actual toy with. Um, so that's coming out pretty soon, huh, Brian? And we're doing that. And then um, we're working with documentary still. And then what else are we doing? We've done a ton of shit. Stuff. Yeah, we have a big show coming up in Beverly Hills at Julian's. Um, just a lot of stuff. Never ends. <laughs> it never ends. And I find it goes both ways when you have somebody who does fine art and or pop culture art. Either their home looks like a museum or their home has no sign of what they do for a living. They leave the art <laughs> at the office or their studio and that's that. Which one are you like? Uh, museum for sure. I mean, we have stuff everywhere, just collectible stuff that we just collected over the years. And just, you know, I have a bunch of studios on the property too. So it's kind of, we have a gallery on the property too. So there's art everywhere. And you're totally based in Los Angeles these days? Yes. So you grew up in LA. You mentioned the Sunset Strip before. You're in LA now. Has that always been the case? You never went anywhere else? No, I'm from New Orleans originally. So I, I moved out here in seventh grade uh, or eighth grade, something like that. And this is where I started my graffiti career. But yeah, I originally grew up in New Orleans. So there was never a detour to New York. I hitchhiked to New York in high school to go paint trains. You know, um, that was like, I love that. That was like the biggest deal in the world to me back then. You know, like I couldn't wait. And I hitchhiked there just to hit the subways and I got the last of the running subways, you know, so it was fun. Wow. I didn't know that part of your career. So all that said, when you're creating, do you have music on at full blast? Yes, all the time. And do you specifically have to feel inspired to create or is a lot of your work, you start creating and if it comes out bad, you just throw it out? Uh, I don't throw it out, but you can go over it, you know, Graffiti is like the ultimate eraser. You just paint over it, you know? So you just, you wow. know. Yeah. Wow. And do graffiti artists have endorsements with different spray companies? Yeah, 100%, for sure. Wow, so who do you endorse? Again, this is all mind-blowing to me. I'm with Montana Cans out of Germany, um, and I think it's the best paint in the world, and I've been with them for wow, six years or something, you know? But it's so crazy because when I started painting, you know, we had like 12 colors that we used and now there's 500 colors. I'm like, oh man, it's too much. <laughs> the, the average person in, is going to go to like a Blick Art or a Michaels. Are there more specialized just spray can site, uh, shops and websites? Yeah, well, that's the, you know, the, the cans I use, they sell them at both those places. Hmm. So, you know, talent, experience and opportunity aside, uh, people could use the same tools as, as you. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, I think it's even in like, uh, like Osh or Ace now. It's like, it's, it's everywhere now. Hmm. And then and another cap, thing, you can buy different caps, which people don't know about. Like you can get a fat cap, a skinny cap, stuff like that. Wow. And another thing that uh, really intrigues me about people who work and live under an alias is you sometimes don't know if they have their hands in other businesses or fields. Like, do they own restaurants to real estates? Do you have life outside of this, outside of art? Uh, I do, but you know, I, everything has to revolve around art now. So, you know, I'm a partner in a gallery and partner in a management company and partner in a print shop, stuff like that, but it all revolves around art. Cool. So 
You've told me what you're working on. You told me about this great monster project. Is there anything that you wish still more people knew about you in general, or is the right amount of info out there? I think it's just the right amount. <laughs> <laughs> That's the vibe I'm getting, that I haven't reached the part where I asked something too intrusive, but at the same time, I still got some, uh, some interesting, unique information there. I'm very impressed, man. So uh, two quick questions, and then you're free for me. And the first one is, TV, what are you watching these days? Because a lot of us can use a new series or two to binge watch. Uh, I was watching Yellowstone and Fargo. Oh, okay. Nothing about music there, except uh, Fargo has some good songs in the background. Right, right. Cool. And my closer is any last words for the kids? Uh, keep on keeping on. Just like you, just like Uncle Risk. Yep, there it is. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really love the work you're doing on all ends and hope to see a gallery or something in New York when life gets normal again. All right, brother. Thank you. Hope to see a gallery or something in New York when life gets normal again. All right, brother. Thank you. Outro.